Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Mike, I go by DJ Access, and welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about the MPC Live 2. The tricky part is that I am typically a machine user, so I started with the machine MK2 when it first came out, bought a second one because I loved it so much. I had a travel one and a studio one. Uh, when the MK3 came out, I purchased that, and then as soon as I heard about Machine Plus, the standalone version, uh, I got so excited, I ordered it immediately, and uh, one of the main reasons I just stopped bringing it out to shows is because it was such a hassle to bring two laptops and it looked kind of ugly on my setup and uh, for another of, of other reasons. But to just have the machine by itself, I plug it into my mixer uh, and, and my monitor and I'm off. That was such a huge thing. And the time that I was waiting for Machine Plus to come, I was doing some research and I found this guy, the MPC Live 2 by Kai. And I'd heard good things about the MPCs for finger drummers. So decided to try it out and it's pretty dope uh it's got a built-in speaker and a battery so that made it really easy to just you know work on music on the couch or uh, outside or in bed uh, you just bring it anywhere and you could kind of make music headphones or not headphones you got the speaker so I was pretty dope and uh, I've been liking p playing around with it I do not think I'll be keeping it over the machine plus and I'll be talking about uh, some of those reasons why and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please make sure uh, to leave a like or follow or subscribe if you find something uh, interesting. But I just want to get started. What we're going to do today is I'm going to go through my workflow process for finger drumming. And then I'm going to go through my workflow process for, you know, making a quick beat. And then I'm going to, I had some notes that I just wanted to go over that I think, you know, people should know if they are machine users that are switching to MPC or if you're looking at the MPC Live 2. Uh, I will be doing a Machine Plus uh, impressions video. I just wanted to get this one out first, and then I'll doing a Machine Plus full review uh, at some point down the road as well. But without further ado, I just want to get into the video, so I'm going to hit start. This is a blank program. I'm going to help you see this a little bit. Boom. <laughs> So this is a blank program. Uh, the only thing I've really changed is setting the velocity on the pads to 120%. I think that's a really good number for where if I tap the pad, I still get a good um, sound, but I also get uh, some playability and you know it's gonna uh, it's gonna sound like a live drummer a little bit. So let's see what I want to start with first. I just want to grab a drum track because that's really easy. I'm just gonna go to Shift Menu. That's Browse. I'm gonna go to Tight Kit. It's one I kind of like, and it's pretty good. So then now we got it in there, but it's still not on my main screen. It's just doing little sample things. So first I'm gonna go to Program and tab down onto my Tight Kit. And now, I have my kit. So kick, snare, hats, um, when I make my finger drumming kits, I leave these two pads for auxiliary depending on what I need for the style I have, and then I leave these two as auxiliary. And then the rest uh, are predetermined. So first, solid kick, don't need to touch that. Solid snare, solid hi-hat, solid open hat. Secondary kick, sounds good. Typically, I like my clap on this pad. This kit doesn't have a clap, so we're going to use this as my clap. Copy. Now I got my clap there. It's more, it's more of like a rim shot. When I go to my toms, I like my toms to go from high pitch to low pitch. So we're going to flip that around real fast. Since we're not going to be using this pad, I'm going to grab this, copy, and then that's my low. So I'm going to move that over there. So this is my high. I'm going to copy this here. So now I'm going, oh, that's usually my crash. So I'm going to grab this, move that over there. Beautiful. And I'm going to actually duplicate it again onto this pad because what I'm going to do is go into menu, program, edit, and I'm going to go to simultaneous play, pad one. And you'll notice that now when, when I hit this, I also get the kick. And if that doesn't sound, if you can't hear the kick, no kick with the kick. And that's really good because when I go and do my rolls, 
I don't have to do a double tap. I can just go. And that makes it really easy. So I got my toms laid out the way I want. These are good. These are blank. Well, they're not blank because I haven't deleted them, but I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that. And now we're ready to just do some easy beats. And that's typically how I lay out my finger drumming kits. Uh, and you can, you know, pull drums from all different types of kits and make them onto the pads the way you want. Uh, but that's kind of the easy way for me to finger drum. So that was really easy. I did like that. Um, and other things I like uh, about this MPC Live 2 is the, the touch screen. Man, I'm going to miss that when I go back to my Machine Plus because just being able to, to see it on the screen, tap it, and go is super helpful. Uh, and, and, and it works really good. I think it's even multi-touch. So that makes it really easy. Um, anything else with the finger drumming? Yes. Uh, so sends and returns were actually something that I had to watch a ton of videos on and read the manual like three times to figure out where they are. Um, so let's say on this scenario, I want, uh, I want uh, like some reverb, but I want the reverb to be on the snare, the same to be on the hi-hats and everything else. What I can do is... Uh, I can put it directly onto the snare, but that's not going to make it con consistent for all the pads. So uh, we're going to use ascend and return. So I'm going to go to, oh, let's see if I remember how to do this. We're going to go to menu, program, edit. I got my pad. There's something at the bottom here. I can go to effects. And then now I have my sends. And this Q link, you can like set this to, to for these knobs to do different parameters. It's a little bit tricky, but it's very, very helpful once you figure it out. So what I can do is get, add some delay by sending it to send one. Or I can add reverb for send two. And now that way my, my reverb is consistent over the entire kit. So, you know, I can hop over my crash and add the same reverb that's on my crash that's on my snare. And I can actually control that volume uh, by going to mix and then at the top here going down to returns and then I can manipulate the volume of each of the effects change different effects uh, It's very very helpful for those of you who produce uh, you, you know how helpful sends and returns can be And let's see is there anything else I want to talk about I'm gonna check my notes before I move on So when I was copying pads you guys um, may or may not have noticed uh, I think these are copied over if you go into program edit and you go to master and you try to change the semitone on this pad, it's also going to change it on the other pad. So what you want to do if you want to change, so let's say I have like one tom and I want to just make four toms out of it. I actually have to go to the sample and I'll hit it again to get to page two. And I can go to semitone. And then now it's not affecting the second pad. That was something that was pretty tricky for me to figure out. Um, it, that's when you're looking in the manual, it's like pad slice destructive versus non destructive. Okay, pad note mode, workflow, sense of returns we talked about. One thing that uh, was kind of tricky in the preferences, you want to turn the filter off when you're adding uh, new samples because for some reason it puts a, a filter on, like an automatic filter on your thing. And now when I changed, when I made my default program, I turned it off. But if you go to program edit and then over to filter envelope, there's a filter that's on and the cutoff is actually there. So when you load new sounds, it, it's filtered out and it's it's kind of tricky at first to, to figure out what's going on. So um, for those of you who are trying this out, uh, that's something that I, I did first thing when I made my, my template is turn that filter off. Okay, I think we can move over to the next workflow, which is just gonna be creating a quick track. Now, I'm not a producer. I know a little bit about production. I've done you know, some practice production in the past, uh, but you know, I know enough to, to kind of make some stuff on the fly. So we're just gonna go to menu, browser, um, projects, places, PC documents, projects, please, and then start. So that'll get me my program. Okay. 
If I go to main, boom, blank slate. Uh, so first I'm going to add drums. I'm just going to add the same drums uh, that I had before just for ease. Again, shift menu will get me to browse. I'm going to go to internal kits. Actually, I'm going to go to NPC documents kits. Boy, there it is. Okay, we'll load that up. Go to program, find our drum. Okay, so we got our kit. Um, I'm just gonna show you how you can uh, record drums very, very easily without having to do finger drumming. So I'm gonna hit overdub. It's the same as record, uh, kind of, uh, but I, I just only use overdub because it, for, for what I do, it's easier. And then I have my metronome set uh, to record. So anytime I'm recording, my metronome is gonna be on and I get a count in as long as it's stopped. So what I'm gonna do is hit play start and then really easy to do a kick, kick and snare pattern. I have it on four barred loops. And I messed up a little bit, so I'm gonna go to uh, quantize. So they call it timing correct. I like the strength at around 95 and the swing at 50, boom. And it's on 16th notes, and I'll turn the overdove up. Okay, and before you guys get tired of that beat, what I'm gonna do is go to my next track. So I'll go to track two. I'm gonna go to plugins, and then there's tube synth, bassline, and electric. I'm just gonna go to electric and select that. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of presets here, and I'm gonna use this uh, toy EP, and you'll notice it's on here, but it's like all the low notes. So you actually have to go to your pad bank to get something that's actually usable. And it's the chromatic scale. So it's going up by one semitone each. And that's not ideal for the way I like to, to, to work and make music, because uh, I don't know music theory that well. I know the basics. And so what I'm gonna do is go to shift and notes. And that's one of the things in the workflow that I really don't like. I would like the notes to be like static where I can always have it on this method and then I can just kind of play around. MPC doesn't do that. Machine does. One of the reasons I'll be switching back to machine. So I'm on C. I'm actually going to put it to um, harmonic minor. And you can see Now I'm doing all notes in this in the harmonic minor C scale. So what's really cool is I can actually go to chords, same thing. And now I'm getting a one, three, five. It's using the one, the three, and the five of the chord or the scale. So sometimes that can sound good, sometimes not. But uh, same thing with the chromatic chords. And I can select whether it's a minor chord or a major chord. And then this progressions thing is really dope uh, because it, uh, it kind of just gives you a progression. So actually, I'm just going to play random. Well, not random, but just the first four. There you go. Really easy. So we're just going to record that real quick. We got that. And what we can do is so it goes C, C, G, G. So if I wanted to add a bass, all I do is I go to track three. Um, instead of plugin one, I'm going to add plugin program. Go to our baseline plugin, and what's really nice about these plugins is that they're they're v, they're synths. So you can, if you don't like the sound, you can go in and tweak it. So if you know how to mess with oscillators, envelopes, filters, all that, 
uh, you can get the sound exactly how you want. I suggest doing that before your performance, but if you you know you get really good with this, you can just do it on the fly. So, so again, I would love it to have be on notes right right out of the gate. Sometimes you have to figure out whether the 16 level is on. There's an indicator, but sometimes when you hit shift notes, it does it automatically, and I hate that. So there's that. The pad bank's gonna let me go up and down, but I'm actually just gonna go back to notes. So shift 16 level will give me to notes, and we're not gonna use up, uh, we're not going to use uh, chords. We're going to use notes. And I believe it was C, C, G, G. So I got my C1 here. Okay, cool. So we got C, C, G, G. Let's go to overdub, play start. mix because it's really loud go up to here go to programs so there we go we got our keys we got our bass we got our drums so then you can just solo over this I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do that so we're gonna go back to main we're gonna go to track four add a new plugin program this time we'll use the tube synth, that's the last of the plugins. And I'm just gonna look for a sound. All right, we gotta find something quick here. That'll work. So she's the default. Um, and then we're not gonna record anything. What we can do is go back into the notes. We know we're in C. And actually, I'm gonna, instead of doing harmonic minor, I'm gonna switch it over to the uh, pentatonic minor. And I find that's really good for soloing because it gives you a lot of notes to play with or a lot of different scales. So you see, I have not four full scales to play with, but you know, you see what I'm saying? I have four uh, root notes and I can just play whatever I want here. All these notes are gonna sound good. So you just have to do them in rhythm, and then as you kind of learn the pentatonic scale, you can really mess around. Uh, and, and you know, if I'm DJing and I know the songs in C, what I can do is, uh, you know, hop over to the C pentatonic, find, you know, where I wanna do, and it's, it's a good part where I can solo over, and then boom, I can do sax, I can do keys, I can do a synth, and it, it makes it really, you know, So let's add a melody really, really quick. So we'll go stop, overdub, and then let me find my C's and my G's. C and G, okay, cool. So I just add a little time control because I messed up on one of the notes. Let's go to mix. And again, I'm not, you know, a music theory guy. That they, they make it really easy for you. So all I have to do is learn the tools and then you can do your thing. And then you can go in and mute stuff. And, you know, quick little track there, not knowing music theory, it's not too, too bad. Uh, you can go, like I said, you can go and tweak all the different instruments, the kit. Um, so let's say I didn't like that uh, synth sound. I can go to main. I 
can just keep twisting the knob till I find some I like. So you can get your ideas in there with the default patterns and then find the sounds later. And then, ooh, I like that, tweak it a little bit. So again, I really, really like this unit. I just think Machine Plus is gonna be gonna do a little better. I'm gonna miss the speaker, I'm gonna miss the battery, I'm really gonna miss the touch screen, uh, but the workflow on Machine is, is gonna be a lot better for me. Uh, one thing that's really tricky about this, so you notice I wanna jump back and forth between tracks, right? Uh, not only do I want to do that, I ha or sorry, I want to jump forth between tracks. To do that, I have to go back to the main page, one button, and then hit the track button. So if I'm four tracks away, main, track, 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 this is a touch screen. It's not that reliable. Uh, so move, jumping between, between tracks is tricky. Also, not only do I have to do that, let's say I want to get back to my track, boom. And then now, not only do I have to do that, I have to hit shift notes, hope that it's not on 16 level and make sure that it's also in the right octave because sometimes the octaves can jump. So I have to go here. And then, so that's just way too many steps for the way, for how quickly I like to work. Again, I'm not doing this in the studio. I'm doing this live. Uh, so the Machine Plus does that a little bit faster. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to have to connect a monitor to it, and that's just more stuff I have to bring and instead of just having the speaker here to kind of monitor myself or an extra set of headphones. Another thing that I didn't like about the MPC Live 2 is there's no dedicated headphone knob on the outside, and I really couldn't find the headphone volume. I know it's in here. I know it's in here, but um, it was hard to find. I, I, you know, I tried to look around. Uh, having it right here uh, on the back of the unit would be so much easier, and I hope if they make the MPC Live 3 that that's something that they add. I'm going to check my notes one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, once again, if you're watching this, you found something helpful, like the video, subscribe or follow, and uh, tell a friend about the video if they're looking at the MPC Live 2 or the Machine Plus. I'm going to be doing a Machine Plus first impressions video here shortly. And um, what else am I going to be doing? I'm going to be doing a full Machine Plus review as soon as I feel like I know the unit really, really well. And that should be pretty quickly because I'm already a machine user. Um, we talked about sends and returns. I uh, talked about the pad note workflow. Sensitivity on programs, not the master. Sure. So you can actually go in and adjust the sensitivity on each program. Programs are like your groups if you're a machine user. Uh, and But you also have a master velocity, which I said I, I like at 120 or 125%. For this, I was doing it at 120, but I did notice that one of my drum hits wasn't as, as hard as I'd like it to be. So maybe I'll boost it up to 125 on the master. Pads feel great. I think I mentioned that. I'm doing this video for the sixth time, so it's hard to remember. Uh, what I did and didn't do, but hopefully you guys like the studio. Uh, again, if you like the video, let me know. If you have a question about the MPC Live 2 or the Machine Plus, let me know in the comments. If there's something you did not like about the video, let me know because I'm always trying to improve. Uh, you know, I've got you know two cameras now, uh, full lights, um, and 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 a microphone boomstick. So I certainly hope I don't have to buy anything else, but I will if you guys tell me to, if, if you say the stream sucks. Uh, again, my name is Mike. I go by DJ Access. Hopefully you learned something today. Let me know what you want me to do next in the comments. Peace. I'm out.